University of Michigan for a look at the starting lineups here this afternoon. The visitors... Ohio Coach Randy Ayers in his third year with the Buckeyes, and here's the lineup he'll put on the floor. Up front, he has Chris Gent, a senior from Sparta, New Jersey, and alongside him, Canton, Ohio senior seven-footer Bill Robinson. Now, Ohio State really goes with three guards. Senior Jamal Brown is the team captain. Point guard Mark Baker is also a senior, and then All-American junior Jim Jackson, who can play the guard or forward spot. Steve Fisher is the head man here at the University of Michigan, also in his third year with the Wolverines. And here's the starting lineup he puts on the floor. Senior James Bosco is up front, along with the talented freshman Chris Weber from Detroit. And in the middle, freshman from Chicago, Juwan Howard. In the backcourt, another freshman from Detroit, Jalen Rose, and alongside him is junior Michael Talley. The officials for this afternoon's game, Ed Hightower, Jody Sylvester and Tim Higgins and it'll be Ed Hightower tossing in at center between Chris Weber and Bill Robinson and we're underway with the opening tap to Michigan. Bosco goes down low immediately to Howard and then back out to Bosco who drives and has the ball stripped. This is Jackson, Ohio State's take charge guy. Brown alone for the open shot. And Ohio State is on top by two. Well, Randy Harris, Greg told us yesterday that he doesn't mind running up and down with Michigan, but he wants to control that type of play, get him in a half-court set to see if Michigan can sustain a half-court D. We talked about the pressure defense at the top, Lenny, and right away, Ohio State draws a foul. And Steve Fisher believes that if his team can beat the press, they can win this basketball game, provided, again, they have a limited amount of turnovers. Jackson with Bosco on him. Robinson with the left-handed hook. Doesn't fall. Talley has the rebound, and here come the Wolverines. Rose inside, forced the pass, and lost it. Ohio State running Chris Weber. He's going to draw an awful lot of attention, and Michigan has to recognize when they can get it to him and when they can't. Weber on Robinson and back outside to Baker. Both teams will play man-to-man -man defense. Defense, 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 defense. Here's Chris Jent. And now Baker, top of the key. Shot doesn't go, whistle blows underneath, and the foul is on number five, Jalen Rose. We talked about sustaining the defense. Ohio State doesn't believe that Michigan can play defense for 20 or 30 seconds. They have a tendency to be impatient, as young people will be, to go out and reach and gamble, and Ohio State looks to take advantage of that. Two team fouls on Michigan. Here's Jackson. Jackson gets a shot off baseline. No rebound to the Wolverines. That was just pretty good man-to-man -man defense on Jim Jackson. inside to Howard and back outside to James Vostel who's a pretty good three-point shot. Jalen Rose, quick turnaround. Ooh. Missed the rim, hit the backboard. Ohio State has it and whistle blows and the foul goes against the Wolverines. James Bosco draws his first. We talked about Chris Weber being the main concern of Ohio State. Look at this, three guys on him, ready to pounce on the ball, particularly the passes inside. And Ohio State looks to take away that inside game of Michigan. Number 24, Jimmy King, has come into the game for Michigan, replacing Bosco. Jimmy King, yet another of that heralded freshman class out of Plano, Texas, a 6'5 freshman. And he draws the assignment of Jim Jackson and goes right by him with a nice cut. Great idea by Mark Baker. Good recognition to take the double and to find the open man. Two on one for Michigan. King lost the handle and puts it up. That's Michigan's basketball game. Get the ball up the floor. Get the advantage situation because they're great creators. 4-2 Buckeyes. Baker inside. Jackson lost the ball to King, and Jackson regains it. And Jackson on the baseline, fakes once, and travels.
And here's the full court pressure. Now watch now what Michigan wants to do is spread the floor, expand the defense, and make sure that they can get the ball in inbounds, which they have, and they've gotten it down. And watch the secondary type of break where they're going to stay fluid rather than back it out. Bad shot from Juwan Howard. And Baker pushes it up the floor. The feed nicely to Chris Gent. And the foul, no, a traveling violation. Jody Sylvester says that Gent traveled before he got the shot off. Second Ohio State turnover. And here comes a three-on-one Michigan break. The long We're tied at four. Baseline turnaround is good. Two keys so far. Michigan is spreading the Ohio State defense and getting those advantage breaks. And Jim Jackson's trying to take over and get something started for Ohio State, but he's not successful. Weber, quick turn, doesn't go. Jamal Brown with the rebound. Baker, down the lane and for the short pop. Had the open shot, couldn't drop it. Weber with the rebound, and here comes Jalen Rose. Michael Talley, open for three. Doesn't fall, and here comes Baker. Back and forth, and the kind of game that Ohio State really didn't want to get into. There's a takeaway by Rose. And one on three, he'll take it in. And the offensive foul on Rose. That's number two on Jalen Rose. And we talked about the youth in the backcourt. Some of the bad decisions made. Jalen Rose had an opportunity to draw the defender and dish it. Stepped in a little too close, but here Michigan's been very capable of spreading the defense and getting the two-on-one break. That's the type of athletic ability they want to display. 6-4 Ohio State, 15-52 to play. Back at the University of Michigan after the timeout, freshman Jalen Rose finds himself on the Michigan bench with two personal fouls and two turnovers. You talk about the unpredictability of freshmen, and he's come out on the wrong side of the ball today. Well, certainly it's a question of judgment, and of course judgment comes from experience, and Rose, the freshman, has a long way to go in learning his basketball game. Sitting on the bench, though, is going to give him some perspective and hopefully he'll be better when he gets back in yet another freshman 6-6 ray jackson from austin texas has replaced him in the michigan lineup lawrence funderburk is in the lineup for ohio state he's wearing number 34 and jackson is looking down low for him now baker can't get it to him baker drives and here's funderburk to the baseline on the line well, Randy Ayers told us yesterday that Lawrence Funderburg may be the key to Ohio State season. That prior to uh, today's ball game, Ohio State had difficulty in getting him involved, and they were standing around waiting for that to happen. Lawrence Funderburg, of course, formerly at Indiana University, left that school, has just played now in seven games here at Michigan, only in 14 games his entire collegiate career. And that's a lot of learning to do, but he's big, he's talented particularly in blocking shots. Fifth turnover of the game for Michigan. So Ohio State now with Baker and Jackson. Steve Hall, number 42, is also in the lineup for Ohio State. Jamal Brown and Lawrence Funderburg. Here's Funderburg. Left-handed shot goes to his right. Shot doesn't fall. Weber has the rebound. King. Offensive foul on Jimmy King. And Thunderbird took the charge in the middle of the lane. Maybe Jalen Rose should call these guys aside and say, wait a minute, you can't drive down the lane and not be aware of the Ohio State guys trying to take the charge. But Michigan still wants to force the issue, and Steve Fisher has a tough job. He may not be able to rein them in because he doesn't want to take his young player's confidence, but certainly he's got to tell them, be careful of your drive. He admitted to us yesterday, they'll make more than their share of mistakes. Oh, great to Baker, who lost it on his way up. Jackson fakes once, puts it up. Nice shot by Jim Jackson. Well, I spoke with Jim Jackson right before today's game, and he said he's going to have to get started quickly because he doesn't want his team to fall behind in this rabid Chrysler crowd here. Well, Jackson has six of Ohio State's eight points. Tally. And losing it out of bounds is Ray Jackson. Another Michigan turnover. What's happening right now in Ohio State defense 
is really stepping out on any cross to the ball and switching. They're also stepping up on all penetration because they know the Michigan players like to get in the air. Jamal Brown for three. Hit the back rim and came back, and Jackson picks it off. Jackson had it rejected by Weber. Here's a four and a five on two now. And coming back to break it over, Jamal Brown. Terrific defensive play by number 30 for Ohio State. I tell you, Michigan doing a nice job against Jim Jackson, surrounding him with two and three people every time he puts the ball on the floor. And Jackson's going to have to recognize he may not be capable of penetrating. He's going to have to get more involved in the offense by hitting and then cutting to the basket. Well, Jim Jackson's going to get a seat on the Ohio State bench for now. And into the lineup, Chris Gent, who started the game, and Jamie Skelton, number 15, a sophomore guard from Dayton, Ohio. Rob Palinka into the Michigan lineup. He's wearing number three. Inside, taken away by Ohio State. Back come the Buckeyes. Baker breezes down the lane and scores. Well, this is a good, quick team for Ohio State. Mark Baker at his best in the open floor. And there is another Michigan turnover on the inbounds pass. That is eight turnovers now. Make it nine for the... Wolverine. Now right in the backcourt for Ohio State, you got two Jets and Mark Baker you see here who went coast to coast on that layup and also Jamie Skelton. And then up front you've got quick athletic guys like Lawrence Funderburg and Chris Gent. So I think Randy Ayers right now is matching Michigan with uh, running speed for running speed. 10-4 Ohio State. 13-10 to play first half. Thunderbird fakes Howard and goes baseline. Shot didn't fall. Loose ball. And it's out of bounds to Michigan. Mark Baker thought he saved it, but he didn't. A little congratulatory dap to the official. I'm not sure Mark agreed with that call. He thought that uh, Chris Weber and his hustle effort kind of bounced it off his hand. Well, there's no sense in making enemies early on, is it? No, and that's a senior for you. Chris Weber going one-on-one -on -one and Thunderbird fouled him. There is Lawrence Funderburg. He drew his first. We mentioned nine turnovers so far for Michigan this afternoon, and they average 19 on the game. And that's where the patience of Steve Fisher comes in. Jalen Rose back in the lineup. And he picked off by Jackson. Steve Fisher's got to have patience with the players out there, knowing they're going to make those mistakes. Juwan Howard with his first basket. And it's 10-6, Buckeyes. Baker down low for Thunderbird. And over the back, number 42, Steve Hall, will get called for the foul for Ohio State. See, the big problem that Randy Ayers has is if he's going to match running quickness and speed, he doesn't have a way to match rebounding power. And right now, Michigan is commanding uh, the boards, particularly on both ends, on the offensive board is where they're really showing it. Again, Michigan goes to work on that pressure defense of Ohio State and get it across the line. Weber has the open shot, and Palenka travels. A couple more substitutions for the Buckeyes. Jimmy Jackson and Jamal Brown will come back onto the court for Randy Ayers. Skelton and Hall back and take a seat. See, the other side of it is sometimes you get in a game like this and you have a tendency to hyperventilate and fatigue early because you're so excited. You give guys like Jackson and Brown a blow, they come back in fresh and ready to play. Michigan fans and Coach Steve Fisher wanted to travel. Chris Gent open for three-pointer, too long. Rose tips it, Palinka grabs it. The lob for Weber. Gets it down low and it's batted away and taken away. The lob for Thunderbolt. Mark Baker ranking number sixth on the all-time Ohio State assist list. Just added another good one. 12-6 Buckeyes. And the steal by Jamal Brown. 
14 to 6. And Steve Fisher wants timeout right now. We have 11 minutes, 15 seconds to play here in the first half. And the high-flying Ohio State Buckeyes are leading it by 8. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Well, you can't diagram a fast break any better than this. Watch the lanes, see how wide they are. It makes it very difficult for the defenders to pick up. And Lawrence Funderburg at 6'9", if you can be sneaky at 6'9", gets behind the defense. We've seen him do that time and time again this year. That's a patented play for Ohio State. And that's what we talk about when we say Ohio State wants to run, but they want to do it under control. Great break opportunity for them, everybody in play. Ohio State has outscored Michigan 10 to 2 in the last 5 minutes and 17 seconds. And of their 14 points, they've gotten 10 of them off of 12 Michigan turnovers. Palinka, open three-pointer, that doesn't fall. Robinson with the rebound. And Ohio State's going to push it. Baker, change of pace. Floats, doesn't fall. Both teams have now settled down on the defensive end and are limiting each other to one shot only. Michigan with Howard, Jackson, Rose, Polinka, and Chris Weber. Howard. In and out, Polinka crashing the offensive boards. He traveled. Second traveling violation called on Polinka this afternoon. Well, you really can't blame that on the freshman because Rob Polinka is a senior. But it was a good effort in getting to the offensive board. Neither, she, neither team doing any outstanding shooting so far today. Steve Fisher about to get seven-foot Eric Riley into the game at the next whistle. Gent, turnaround, baseline. Nice shot, Chris Gent. Well, that's going to be a good matchup for Ohio State. Chris Gent, very mobile. And, and Juwan Howard for Michigan is just as mobile, but Gent more experienced on the perimeter. takes a look. And Jackson down low. Nice look down low to Jalen Rose. And it's 16 to 8 Ohio State. First two points of the game for Rose who comes in averaging 18.6. Robinson gets Weber in the air and then goes around him for the two. You see I think Bill Robinson's very important. His seven foot frame just his presence alone helps Ohio State greatly, even if he doesn't contribute a lot defensively or offensively. Another turnover. Fisher inside, doesn't get it to fall. Gent comes away with the loose ball. Here's the exercise of control. Ohio State now calling a play, trying to force Michigan to sustain their defense for more than five or eight seconds. Jackson had it rejected by Ray Jackson. And here's Weber going around his man, trying to lay it home, doesn't get it. No whistle on the play. Back come the Buckeyes. Jackson. Goes down low, and Howard steps in front for the steal. And here comes Weber. Bounce pass for Ray Jackson, and that's a blocking foul. Well, Michigan just keeps coming at you. Forget about the offensive foul. They figure the officials aren't going to blow it every time. First of all, take a look at Chris Weber leading the fast break. And Jackson decides he's going to take it to the basket. And that's really actually a good attitude to have. You have to play your basketball game, and you have to continue to attack, but you have to do it with good judgment. Meanwhile, the pace of this game, Len, I thought we were still a week away from the Daytona 500. Well, these guys are flying up and down. I mean... Steve Fisher said he had no fear of flying. Randy Ayers was a little maybe hesitant to get involved because he knows he doesn't have the matchups in his favor. Again, particularly Chris Weber. We saw him go between his legs, behind his back on that fast break. 6'9 guys don't usually do that. You were the only one I knew of. <laughs> Chris then, Gent with a seat on the bench. Up, right? <laughs> Chris Gent with a seat on the bench. Lawrence Funderburg comes in. Ray Jackson hit the first of two. And this is a 52% free throw shooter. And he missed the second. Riley with the rebound. Missed everything. Jimmy King, Eric Riley, Ray Jackson, Jalen Rose, and Rob Polinka on the floor for the Wolverines. And there's the doorway. 
And now, out front, referee Tim Higgins says that a Wolverine touched it before it went out of bounds. That was a good call. It was deflected. Less than eight and a half to play now. First half, 18 to nine, Ohio State with the lead. Jackson fakes one, doesn't get it to fall, and Riley has the rebound. Howard double team back outside. Jimmy King, short on the shot. Robinson with the rebound. Greg, it's almost as though Ohio State is going to give up the perimeter shot to try to protect the inside. Jackson. Thunderbird back outside for Jamal Brown. And again, neither team lighting up the field goal percentages so far this afternoon. Well, let's go back the other way. Jackson. Missing it. Thunderbird tips it home. Talk about being the key. Very active on the offensive board. Very quick feet. Lawrence Thunderbird. Well, we are almost 13 minutes into this game, and Michigan has just nine points on the board. Look at all the room that Jackson's giving the shooter. Riley. Short pass. Here comes Ohio State. I tell you, Ohio State's tired. You know, Jamal Brown got it in the front court and nobody ran with him. The guys are trotting back. The pace is really affecting Ohio State a lot more than it is Michigan. Jackson looking for Thunderbird, and there he is. Wants some room to work. Short left hook, no good. Robinson traveled along the baseline. And with six minutes and 30 seconds to play here in the first half, we'll take time out. The Buckeyes lead it 20 to 9. Right, Gumbel and Elmore back at the Chrysler Arena on the campus of the University of Michigan. We have six and a half minutes to play in the first half, and Ohio State leading the Wolverines by a score of 20 to 9. And one of the truly fine players in the country is in this game today in Jimmy Jackson of Ohio State, uh, Big Ten Player of the Year last year. He's, he's a guy who literally can do it all, Lenny. Well, they talk about leadership is assumed not bestowed and this is a perfect go-to guy because he wants it he wants to take control down the stretch you look at the improvement year by year he's worked very hard on his game particularly his perimeter shooting that's come forward in recent times jim jackson the 6'6 junior out of toledo ohio meanwhile michigan is looking for someone to light a fire for them you see it there one field goal in the last six minutes and 15 seconds and they're shooting just 25 percent from the game four for 16. And Ohio State's gone to zone pressure right now. They started off in a half court, 1-2-2, two, two, and now they're playing pretty much a 2-1-2. Two, two. Eric Riley in the lane. That doesn't fall. Four for 17 for the Wolverines. They were down a bunch in their last outing. On Wednesday night at Michigan State and came back to beat the Spartans in overtime. Lost his footing, shot from outside, is short by Skelton. Michigan back now with Tally, Weber, Riley, Rose, and Jimmy King. And Ohio State back into a man-to-man -man situation, a defense they're much more comfortable with. Still 20 seconds on the shot clock. You know, the changes in the defense ought to confuse Michigan. And there was a blocking foul on number 40, Ricky Dudley. Take a look at this guy, Ricky Dudley, 6'7", freshman out of Henderson, Texas. And this looks like a guy who was built up. And what did Ohio State tell us yesterday? He came that way. <laughs> well, we were talking about the physical strength of the Ohio State team and how that wears teams down throughout the season with their pressure. 
And we looked at Dudley and uh, we wondered how much weight he lifted during the season. And they said, no, he came like this. How'd you like to have him coming home hungry every night? Rose for three from long range, doesn't fall. King, nice try for the pass to Riley. It goes out of bounds and over to Ohio State. And King is hurt at midcourt. King is dragging his left foot. And... Uh, I want to see if he takes a seat. Pull him up, Jimmy. Here's senior James Bosco coming in to replace King. That couldn't wear him that low in my day. Had too much back there. Five minutes exactly to play. Steve Fisher cannot be happy about the turnover situation so far this afternoon. Michigan pushing their defense out a little bit. They've been doing a great job on the perimeter, doubling ball handlers, changing their defenses as well, and Ohio State has been a bit confused on how to solve it. Jackson, top of the key, open and hits it. Well, he's a guy, obviously, Michigan doesn't want to get started. Look for them to start to point more guys for him when he gets the ball to make him give it up. Jackson has eight. It's 22-9. And we're coming up on four minutes to play, and Michigan is still in single digits for the game. Michael Talley goes to the left hand, doesn't fall for him. Dudley with the rebound for the Buckeyes. Good ball movement by the Buckeyes and Michigan right with them. This is Baker. Good recovery by Michigan because they're double teaming along the baseline. And when the ball swings, they've got to recover. Full swings and Michigan is right there. Jackson out of the corner. Off the rim, Weber has the rebound. Three on two for Michigan. Tally can't get around and now puts it up. No, tap, no. Rebound, Jackson. Here comes Ohio State. Baker with a little change of pace and scores. Well, he had the mismatch. Bosco certainly not quick enough to stay with Mark Baker in the open floor. And Baker just gave him a little stutter step before he went to the basket. Almost 10 minutes now since Michigan has hit a field goal. The Michigan is not able to get the ball to Chris Weber on post-up situation. And they're being tempted just to take it to the hole, but they can't make the layup. And that one falls, but he's traveled. Jalen Rose traveled down the lane. We'll take a timeout with 2.57 to play. It's 24 to 9, Buckeyes, and that man, Steve Fisher, looking for some answers. 2.57 to play in the first half. Ohio State leading a cold shooting Michigan Wolverine squad by a score of 24 to 9. Remind you, we'll have the Prudential at the half, and we'll update you on college and pro basketball scores taking place today. We'll have an Olympic update from the French Alps and a tribute to University of Dayton Athletic Director Tom Frerich, who passed away on Friday night. Len, because, because this team is shooting so cold, Steve Fisher would like to look for a team leader out there on the floor. Really doesn't have one yet, does he? No, you want to have that upper-class leadership. Ohio State has a Jim Jackson, but you want to have a person with the experience to be able to find a way to attack this defense and then exploit it. Now, right now, Ohio State set up a great defense. Michigan just seems confused in how to attack it. They need a guy that's going to go forward. Now, we talked to the young guys, Rose, and um, Weber, and they talked about leading by committee. Well, I don't think you can do that out here on the floor. You need one person that's going to direct everyone. And Michigan comes back with some full court pressure. Ohio State, no problem breaking. Chris Gent, open shot, got it. 26 to 9, Buckeyes. Four for Gent. by contrast you got Jim Jackson yelling out what defense we're in everybody gets in place Michigan doesn't have that they don't have that vocal leader although Jalen Rose has the potential the lob picked off by Jackson intended for Weber and again the Wolverines trying to force it inside lob for Thunderbird Baker to Thunderbird for the second time today See, the problems on offense of filtering into Michigan's defense and not getting back because they're hanging their heads on a missed opportunity on offense. 
That one off of Jalen Rose's foot, and it's going from bad to worse for the Wolverines. I mentioned their last time out. Wednesday night, Michigan was down 14 to Michigan State in the second half, came back to tie it, and won by 10 in overtime. But the turnovers today are killing the Wolverines. Michigan has missed its last 10 shots from the floor. And we have a minute 50 to play in the half. See, this is the experience of Ohio State. They're trying to go for the juggler, so to speak, have some killer instinct, and they're gonna make sure that they get a good shot. None of this rushed, impatient type of offense for them. Buckeyes have also taken this Chrysler Arena crowd right out of the game. Are they still here? Shot clock at six, Jackson has it picked off by Rose. Now you gotta make a good decision. You need every opportunity here. Didn't fall, tip up and good by Rob Polinka. And that breaks the long drop. And that was a good job by Jalen Rose. The defense kept retreating, so he kept making up the ground until he had a chance to get the shot and create the opportunity for the rebound. Thunderbird saves it, out of bounds, and belongs to Michigan. Substitutions for Michigan. Number 23, Kirk Taylor, into the game. Bill Robinson back in, and Jamal Brown as well. Greg, up to this point, Michigan is one for 10 in the field goal department. One for the last 10, and they now need to get some quick baskets, but certainly in solving this defense. straight for Michigan, 28-13, Buckeyes, 35 seconds to play, first half. And Mark Baker is going to wait it out. No shot clock. Taylor on Baker, and now Jim Jackson. Didn't get it. Tap no good. Out of bounds. Belongs to Michigan. Michigan. And they'll have 3.7 seconds to do something with it. Might have been a very, very quick shot, although Baker was open. It was a, as good a shot as they were going to get. But I kind of thought Ohio State was not going to let Michigan get another opportunity. Full court pressure and Thunderbird will pressure the inbounds pass. Polinka at the buzzer. No, Jim took it away from him. And that'll do it for the first half here at Chrysler Arena with the score Ohio State 28, Michigan 13. We will return to the Chrysler Arena after this message and a word from your local station. Time score, Ohio State leading the Michigan Wolverines, and welcome back to the Chrysler Arena, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Len Elmore, and it's the first half that the Michigan Wolverines would certainly like to forget. It's very evident, Lenny, that the Wolverines just haven't been able to involve the people they need to be involved in this game. Well, certainly, as we mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, the Ohio State plan was to switch their defenses and switch into man-to-man, -man, cause some confusion, and most importantly, take away the inside game of the Michigan Wolverines. And we'll take a look at one of the defensive uh, trips down court for Ohio State. Chris Weber really hasn't been involved. And we see the fronting by Lawrence Funderburg and the pressure on the ball. That makes it so difficult to get it inside when you have both of those things working for you defensively. Then back at the other end, Mark Baker will look for Funderburg, who ran the court very well. And when you run the court, nice things happen at the other end. Well, again, picture book fast break, kept the lanes wide, and in transition, under control is what Ohio State wants to play. Just 26% field goal shooting for the Wolverines in the first half. Ohio State is at 42. And you know you're having a bad day when you've got 18 turnovers at halftime. Steve Fisher couldn't be happy about that in the locker room. Ohio State has turned that into 18 points at the other end. And Buckeyes have been doing just about everything right. You also know you're having a bad day when you're leading scorer at halftime. You either have some terrifically balanced scoring or you're not scoring at all. And that's been the case for, for Michigan. Jimmy King with just four points to lead the way. Well, Michigan's turnovers, I mean, they've given up some great opportunities at the basket. Michigan's not playing that badly defensively. 
Michigan with 18 turnovers and 13 points as we begin the second half. Jackson, Robinson, Gent, Baker, and Brown, the same starting five for Ohio State. The same starters are in there for Michigan as well. Baseline, Jackson breaks through the reverse layup, and it's 30 to 13. Now the long lob down court, and the foul will be on Mark Baker of Ohio State. Boy, Juan Howard looked like a tight end for the Michigan Wolverine football team on that one, on that grab. But the problem Michigan has is that defensively, even though I said they're not playing that well, Ohio State was up until that shot shooting only 42%. They still have to communicate. The lob. Howard got in behind Robinson and scored. Well, I mentioned you need two things working, fronting the big guys and pressure on the ball. That time, no pressure on the ball by Ohio State. Juwan Howard with four points. Baker in the lane. Got the roll. 32-15, and already in the first 45 seconds of this second half, both teams are shooting better than they did in the first. Long-range jumper by Rose is no good. Rebound comes off to Howard. Drives the baseline. It didn't fall for him, but he will go the line. Well, that was a great shot of Michigan getting the ball past the pressure, oh, getting an advantage break Rose situation. Rose and being under control, recognizing where they had a mismatch. And Juwan Howard, for big guy, very mobile. Bill Robinson's feet aren't quick enough to stay with him on the perimeter. This is only the third free throw of the day for Michigan. Ohio State is yet to go to the line. Juwan Howard, the 6'9 freshman from Chicago. High school All-American at Chicago Vocational. And Howard is one of the leading scorers for Michigan. Rose, 19, Weber, 16, Howard, 10. Look at their production today. Well, particularly Chris Weber hasn't had a chance to get on the board, and Ohio State's done a great job of taking him out of the basketball game. Long pass down court by Ohio State, 32-17. We play a minute and five seconds here in the second half. Brown, back outside for Jensen. Excellent ball movement that time. Penetration forced the defender to collapse and then dish it out to the waiting spot shooter. Tally for Bosco. Bosco shot a little bit too long and there's a push underneath by Jamal Brown. Number one on Brown. I'll tell you right now, Michigan is settling for the jump shot pretty much unless they get a mismatch. And one of the reasons for that is Ohio State took some early charges in the beginning of the game, and that's cut down on the Michigan aggressiveness to the hoop. Bosco inside to Weber, and he's charged with the travel. Hey, now that's got to be as frustrating as it gets. You finally get your hands on the ball, and you still don't get an attempt to the hoop. 34-17, Ohio State. 18-20 to play, second half. Baker, open. Gets the bounce again. Soft shot by Mark Baker. He has eight. And Bosco breaks the pressure. Good. From Rose and the bucket and the foul. Oh, what a pass back across court by Jalen Rose. Well, we know that Michigan's capable, and this is an excellent fast break. Look at Jawan Howard, the left side of his screen. He said he runs the floor well for a big man. And once again, Bill Robinson in a two-on-one situation doesn't get there quick enough. And that's been a problem for Randy Ayers, keeping Bill Robinson in the basketball game because of fouls like that. Howard makes it a three-point play, and it's 36-20, to 20, Ohio State. This is not a time for Michigan to gamble and run out of their defense. They're playing fairly deep, and they have to tighten up on the perimeter a bit more. And the Chrysler Arena crowd gets into this game a little bit more. Tipped away from behind by Weber, and Talley has it. And is that a foul? It's out of bounds. Off 
from Jamal Brown. Bosco will pull the trigger for Michigan. Doesn't fall, and Jackson up high for the rebound. You know, Jim Jackson, when he's at his best, he reminds me a lot of Oscar Robertson. Not a lot of wasted motion, and he gets it done elegantly and unspectacularly. He is Ohio State's go-to, take-charge guy. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Jackson, open. Around and out, and Howard has it. Rose for three. On target, but too much rim. Along the baseline, Baker. Tried to float home, didn't get it. Loose ball, out of bounds, and all two for all six. And I wonder if when Chris Gent was going to get involved in his type of basketball, and we saw it right there. He's willing to put his body on the line. And Lawrence Funderburg into the lineup to replace Bill Robinson. And they'll go to Funderburg right away. follow for the offensive rebound. He's got to learn to move once he gives it up. 36-20. And there's Funderburg. Aggressive on defense. Foul of Howard. That's number two on Funderburg. Transferred from Indiana in the winter of 1991 and just became eligible seven games ago. Bosco almost has it taken away. You were talking, you were telling us yesterday that Thunderbird has put on 20 pounds since his high school days. And he's got the potential of being a force, particularly defensively. Great shot blocker. Cal. Shot doesn't fall. Over the back. That'll go against Bosco of Michigan. That's number two. James Bosco, the 6'8 senior from Grand Rapids and the fat. We'll take a timeout, 15.46 to play here in the second half, Ohio State by 16. 36-20, Ohio State leading Michigan. Want to remind you that near the conclusion of today's game, Len and I will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Oh, and full court pressure by the Wolverines. Brown, Jackson, Thunderbird, and Chris Gent on the floor for Ohio State. Weber, Rose, Talley, Jawan Howard, and Voskis for the Wolverines. Down low, Jackson and finds Thunderbird. No, follow is no good, and the whistle blows, and that'll go against Jawan Howard of Michigan. Well, it's the penetration by Ohio State with the ball. Various guys in their interior passing that's putting a lot of pressure on Michigan at this time. That's number one on Jawan Howard. And Jimmy King, the freshman from Plano, Texas, in to replace James Bosco. And with Ohio State, you can always tell when Jim Jackson's going to be more involved in the offense, he's not playing the point. Jackson's turnaround doesn't fall. Out of bounds. No, Jim saved it. State with a new 45. Jim driving. Nice shot by Chris Jim. Again, good recognition of the mismatch. Juwan Howard on Jim. Jim a lot quicker with the ball. Michael Talley 
position for Weber, and Weber got it on the far side. There's a question of whether or not they could have been called a traveling, but a nice jump stop by Chris Weber defeats all that. And that is Chris Weber's first two points of the day. Baker comes off the pick down low and nails it. And that pick was set by Jim Jackson. He hurts you in a variety of ways, with and without the ball. King for Weber. And Weber has two in a row and some pretty bold passing now by Michigan. Well, they like to get out and run, and if they can play this game in 94 feet, they're in good shape. It's only when they get to the half-court situation and have to sustain their defense that they make a lot of mistakes. Funderburg with Weber on him. Perfect illustration. Funderburg has eight, and there's a takeaway by Ohio State. Four on two. Jen. And the foul. Foul is on Chris Weber. And for Weber, that's number one. Well, Greg, up until now, Michigan's pretty much handled the full court pressure by Ohio State. You know, they get in a half-court situation and they throw the ball away, but it's been a question of making a decision. Steve Fisher worked with them an awful lot yesterday on that full court pressure, and they've done a nice job. They just have to get more opportunities to the basket and stop giving away the easy ones. Chris Kent at the line for Ohio State to shoot two. Ohio State about to take its first free throw of the day. And Jen's got it. We want to remind you, next Saturday, CBS Sports coverage of college basketball continues with a matchup of big men, Shaquille O'Neal and LSU, against Christian Leitner and Duke next Saturday here on CBS. See, in that game, I don't like when people try to match up Shaquille against Christian Leitner statistically because they play for different teams. Both of them are going to be forces on the next level, and both are excellent players in their own right. But it's unfair to match them statistically because it doesn't tell a story. I didn't match them up, Len. No, I'm not talking about oh, okay. Duke. There are other commentators out there who may do it. 44-24, Ohio State. You're with me, man. 13 and a half to play. Out of the corner, shot by Jackson, no good. Loose ball picked off by Ohio State. And Baker. Oh, Mark Baker. Just another change of pace move to the hoop. Communication, Michigan not yelling out for somebody to pick up the ball. Baker has 12. Rose down the lane. And Jalen Rose hits the short pop. And Rose has four. I guess you can say Ohio State did the same thing. You can't let the ball penetrate into the paint without picking up that penetration. 46-26 with 12.50 to play. Jackson to the baseline. The first scores, and he'll go to the line. And when I said he reminds you of the big O, that's what I'm talking about. There was no spectacular dunk involved. There was no dipsy doodle between the legs behind the back. Just pure fundamental basketball, recognizing an open lane to the basket, using the rim to protect from the shot blocker, and a little bit of emotion, very little wasted motion from Jim Jackson. Missed the free throw, came off to Jamal Brown. And Randy Ayers falls out to play from the bench. 42, Steve Hall back into the lineup for Ohio State, but they go to Thunderbird here. Left-hander going to his left and then the dish off. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Ohio Jackson takes a look. Ohio State trying to make Michigan play defense, hoping for a mistake. Jackson into the lane, doesn't fall, rebound off to Riley. That time a good job by Michigan in their half court. No gambling, straight up deep. King throws it back, and Rose picks it off at the half court line. Rose for three. Jalen Rose, who comes in averaging over 18 and a half points a game, hits the three-pointer. He has six, and it's 48-29. Steve Hall rejected on his way to the basket. Rose with the quick pass to Jackson. Fired by Riley. 48-31. 
Riley's first basket of the day. Well, Ohio State's been known to give up a large lead last Thursday against Illinois. They had the game pretty much in control and had to scramble to hold on and win by two. And Ray Jackson just ran over Steve Hall. Well, the Wolverines have doubled up on Ohio State in the turnover department, and the Buckeyes have put it to good use. They've scored 20 points off turnovers. Jalen Rose has just begun to click for Michigan, but Jim Jackson leads the way for Ohio State. 12 points, 5 rebounds, and Ohio State leads it 48-31 to with 11.09 to play in the second half. Let's talk a little bit about Chris Weber's defense. Well, Chris Weber averages about three blocks per game, and he's now starting to assert himself. One of the things he's got to understand is that you don't have to score to make a contribution in this basketball game. You can do it on the other end. Chris Weber comes out of this timeout on the bench. And Michigan looks like they're stepping up their defensive pressure. Brown down the lane, lost the handle, going up and scoring is Thunderbird. And the foul is on Eric Riley. I tell you, Lawrence Thunderbird couldn't have come to Ohio State at a better time. I mean, he's a perfect complement to a Bill Robinson whose presence is needed on the floor but certainly a guy who has the capability of hitting the offensive boards and making a statement like that is needed when Robinson gets in foul trouble. It's also nice to see him smile. <laughs> Thunderbird, a 77% free throw shooter, now has 11 points on the day. 51-31, back to a 20-point lead for the Buckeyes. Michigan will push it again. Rose. And a blocking foul is called on Thunderbird. Number 34, Thunderbird. That's and number three on Thunderbird. Ohio State team foul number six. Michigan is all. And Bill Robinson back into the lineup for Ohio State now. And Thunderbird will take a breather. And a well-deserved rest. Riley. And the basket will count. Well, what Michigan's doing right now against the Ohio State press is expanding the defense. You see how far the second pass gets, and now the advantage situation. It wasn't such an advantage because Jalen Rose decided he was going to take three guys, but just to get the momentum down the floor is what Michigan wants, to create something. Eric Riley now looks to complete a three-point play, second personal foul of the game on Steve Hall, and Riley has five points. 51-34, Buckeyes. 10.45 to play in the game. Jamal Brown looking down low to Robinson who's doing battle in the pivot with Eric Riley. Jawan Howard thought he had the ball batted away but he caught Steve Hall's hand as well. Now that's a good illustration of impatience defensively, something that Randy Ayers figured that Michigan would exhibit. Doing a nice job, Ohio State's in kind of a continuity offense, Michigan getting through the pick. They were doing a good enough job that they didn't want to bail Ohio State out. But that foul, the silly foul, and it's all on the line. Now Ohio State gets an easy two. Spoken like a man who was always sure of himself at the free throw line. <laughs> you sure you got the right part? <laughs> <laughs> no, yes you do, yes you do. Oh, <laughs> missed the first. And we're going to walk down to the other end. Number 22, Jim Jackson, replaces number 42, Steve Ball. Well, while we sort this out, we'll remind you the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am is coming up next. Live coverage of fourth round action. And that's coming up right after we close out Ohio State against Michigan here at the Chrysler Arena. Chris Gent committed the foul, his second, and that sends Jimmy King to the line. Five points now for Jimmy King. Talk about that class of 95 here at Michigan. It's Weber, Jalen Rose, Jawan Howard, Jimmy King, and Ray Jackson. And Ron Polenko will come in to replace King. I was talking with Steve Fisher and said, how did he feel about all those chips falling into place when he was recruiting? He says it kind of happened pretty fast. 
sure he's still pinching himself when he looks at the potential of this group. Jim, a good job of ball handling. 51-36, Ohio State. Look for Ohio State to really milk it unless they get a wide open shot. They're going to make them play deep. Baker inside for the short pop. And Baker has done some damage today. He has 14 points. Polinka for three out of the corner. And Jackson leads the way down court for Ohio State. Brown for three. Way long. Missed everything and off of Howard, not a bound. Ohio State will get the ball back. And you take a look at Jalen Rose a moment ago and frustration starting to creep in. That was an easy rebound Michigan should have had. They can't allow that to happen. They've got to keep fighting back. They have the capability of scoring a lot of points in a short period of time. Still plenty of time remaining. Nine and a half on the clock. Chris Weber back into the game along with Jimmy King. Jackson. Basketball number 22, Jim Jackson. Jim Jackson has 14. He and Baker showing the way for Ohio State. King on his way to the basket, draws the foul from Jackson. Well, you know Jim Jackson is the guy for Ohio State, but Mark Baker is really showing something today. Well, Mark Baker is an important cog. He's an excellent point guard. He's got great quickness, particularly in the pressure D. And when he's scoring, that's primarily in a full court type of game. So you know he's active and he gets involved. And you take a look there. He's had somewhat of a down spell. He's had a little bit of an injury. But more importantly, in the last five games, he's come forward and he's really been, as you mentioned, a great help to Ohio State, particularly on the defensive end. King hits the first, and as we mentioned, he ranks number six all time in assists at Ohio State. He also leads the team in steals, and I think that's where his importance is on the particular the pressure D. Eight points for Jimmy King, 55-38. Jamie Skelton for Jamal Brown. Missed the open jumper. And here comes Rose. Weber. Around his man, scores and draws the foul. Have another look at the lob to Chris Weber, and now he finds his, finds his way to the hoop. Well, not an awful lot of pressure on the passer as he's got perfect view to Weber, but a nice job at throwing the ball to the corner. You throw the lob to the corner of the backboard, and you see Bill Robinson, he didn't make an aggressive effort at Weber. He just kind of reached, and he's not going to get the call. That's pretty much the difference between Robinson and Thunderbird defensively. Three personal fouls on Bill Robinson. And into the lineup for Michigan for the first time today is 6'5", senior Freddie Hunter from Detroit. And here is Weber at the free throw line where he shoots just 51%. And he misses that one. And Polinka bounces it off of his Ohio State man and Michigan has possession. Number four, John Esler. But Chris Jett doesn't have a corner on the hustle mark and Polinka putting his body out there Rob Polinka provided the spark in overtime at Michigan State Wednesday night. Scored six of his career-high nine points in the overtime session. Number four, Doug Etzler, is on the floor now for Ohio State. Here's Hunter. Weber. Three-pointer doesn't fall. Hunter has the rebound. Polinka for three. And Rose with good position. And an offensive foul on Jalen Rose. That's three on Rose. Excellent call by the official. Jalen Rose in great position for the offensive rebound. But he bumped the player to, in order to clear room for himself. Steve 
Fisher pleading his case. He's pointing to the clock, which shows 35 seconds, which means that 10 seconds, if it has not expired, has almost expired, and Etzler is not over the half-court line. Number 40. Well, you got to wonder if Ohio State is cognizant of that. Well, what it means is this pass has to be in the front court, or it's a backcourt violation. understand it. Jackson can't get around his man. Here's Thunderbird spinning in the lane and drew the foul. Foul is on Weber. That's number three on Weber. possibility is if they rule the change of possession. Well, certainly we didn't see that. We saw a tip. Thunderbird. Ohio State leads at 56 to 40 and the official Tim Higgins was nice enough to come over and explain to us that number one, the violation goes on his count and not on the shot clock and if the ball goes out of bounds, they have another full 10 seconds to get the ball over the timeline. And that may be the reason why you don't go by the shot clock as a team. You go by the official. Taylor Rose's shot misses. Jimmy King driving. No good. Loose ball. Rose has it. Rose up again. Good second effort by Michigan. Certainly they're going to look to make a run, but just to follow up on that point, you know, as a team, you don't want to go by anything but the official. Wolverines get the loose ball. Outside, much short. King. On the floor and they'll jump it. Freddie Hunter and Kirk Taylor into the lineup and adding some additional hustle to the Wolverines. Well, one of the things that the Michigan players wanted us to say about them across the nation, in case people didn't know, is that they're a team that comes to play and they don't quit. And this was a perfect opportunity for them to fold it in and sit back and wait for the final result. But they're coming out here attacking, hoping that they still have a chance. Saves the ball from going out of bounds. Hunter to Weber to Rose. There's a box play that went all right for Michigan. 56-44. 11 for Jalen Rose. You know, it's just if Michigan wanted to be down so they could make a patented comeback. Baker. And an offensive foul. did trying to ignite this team well freddie hunter a walk-on who just got a scholarship with the departure of sam mitchell who was a scholarship player to cleveland state you know this is a guy that didn't play an awful lot wasn't a star in high school but now he's in big time college basketball making a contribution that's what it's all about national honor society psychology major and right now his eyes on ohio state Rose down the lane and we told you ohio state has a tendency to give up big leads. They're playing very tentatively right now, and you combine that with Michigan's aggressiveness. 10 to one run for Michigan. Baker looking low to Thunderbird and can't get it to him. Chris Weber all over him. Getting to be about JJ time. For Ohio State, Jim Jackson's got to step up. He is the man with the ball now. Jeff. Weber with 
the rebound. And Jalen Rose looks like a man in a hurry. Taylor for three. Jackson by Jimmy King, the freshman. Nice job of fronting. He's been shadowing Jackson all over the floor. He's pretty much put a crimp into J.J. time. What was once a 24-point lead is down to seven, but then Michigan turns it over again. It's like Steve Fisher said, he lives and dies with these kids. And this year, he may die a couple hundred deaths, but it's worth all of it. Baseline, Brown, fouled by Freddie Hunter. And Steve Fisher also says, Lenny, that he will continue to try different combinations until he finds one that clicks. And for now, it seems Freddie Hunter has helped ignite the squad. Well, Hunter and Taylor, they don't get an awful lot of time, but they've come out here and they've joined with the three freshmen. You got two seniors and three freshmen out there, and maybe Hunter and Taylor are the guys who lead by example, not so much vociferously, but we know Michigan needed some leaders out there to get them under control. Jawan Howard comes on to replace Freddie Hunter. You've got to think Steve Fisher is telling Hunter, don't get too comfortable, we'll be back in there. Jamal Brown, a 74% free throw shooter. Coming up next, final round coverage of the AT&T Pebble Beach. That'll be live here on CBS. Brown hits one out of two. And Ohio State stuck on 56 for a while. Now leads at 57-49. Five points for Jamal Brown. We have 4.15 to play in the game. Weber fights his way on the baseline. King missed the layup, and here comes Jackson. Will take the shot. Front rim, Howard with the rebound. Jackson says he was fouled and didn't get the call. Taylor. And Baker runs it down. on the floor for Michigan and the senior Kirk Taylor we are down to 328 to play in the game Ohio State with the ball leading by eight Thunderbird out of bounds Michigan The Buckeyes have not put a field goal on the board in the last six minutes. The scrambling Michigan defense has made it difficult, but Ohio State still getting the shots they want close in. They just can't put them down. And there's a pretty good defensive play by Chris Jen on a long pass down court. I think the other difference in the Michigan attack is that Weber has been able to touch the ball. He may not have been able to score, but he's making things happen by touching it. The defense collapses, and he's finding some open people. Jim Jackson is going to get a rest for the stretch run with 3.07 to play here. And now we have a timeout on the floor. 3.07 to play here at Chrysler Arena. Ohio State leads it 57-49. 3.07 to play in the second half. 
57-49 Ohio State. Two timeouts remaining for Ohio State and one for Michigan. And the possession arrow in favor of the Buckeyes. Over the last six minutes, Michigan enjoying a 13-2 run. A 24-point Ohio State lead has slowly disintegrated. Juwan Howard. Loose ball, Jamal Brown comes up with it. And taken away. Jackson. has a chance to make it a three-point play and they just don't quit here's an opportunity for the basket off the steal and what Ohio State's got to realize that Michigan keeps coming at them they've got to protect the ball they've got to be aware of guys chasing them from behind but most importantly you know you talk about youthful exuberance these guys came here to play and have some fun and they're finally having fun 57-51. Weber will have a breather. Freddie Hunter back into the lineup. That is a 15-2 run now by Michigan. It's important to play the defense without fouling. Both teams on every foul get an opportunity for two shots at the free throw line. You don't want to give up the easy one. Less than two and a half to play. is Lawrence Funderburg. Jawan Howard, Howard, the guilty party, that's his third. Howard, that is his third. Here's the ball. Number four, Chris Weber. Return to the Chris Weber back, back for Freddie Hunter. And here is Funderburg, who shoots 77%. Well, the foul by Howard certainly wasn't a good one. It's just a cheap reaching foul. But so far, Michigan's not been hurt by the free throw down this stretch run. Missed them both. Tapped up and in by Jimmy Jackson. What a tip in by Jackson. 59, 52 Buckeyes. He has 16. Rose trying to drop it off. Weber recovers. Out of the corner. Ray Jackson very short, and here's Jimmy Jackson. And just not a good look at the basket. This is where Michigan has that nerve to steal, and they really, again, with the inexperience, just don't have anyone to set them that way. And there's a foul out front on Jimmy King. I want to take this opportunity to remind you tonight on CBS just who is Anita Hill besides the woman who accused Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment. Find out tonight on 60 Minutes. And then it's Murder, She Wrote, followed by Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation, Old Pioneers. It all begins tonight at 7 Eastern time here on CBS. Here is Jamal Brown. And he spins it around and out. Randy Ayers, not at the panic stage. No, but he's definitely frustrated. Two times on the line with some cheap fouls by Michigan State. Easy opportunities to push the lead out, and his guys can't convert. One out of two for Ohio State again to the line. 60 to 52. They are six for 13 from the line this afternoon. Coming up on a minute 40 to play in the game. Rose for three. That's off the mark. King went up. Took it away. Jackson, rather. His shot, no good. You see, Michigan has forgotten how they cut this lead down, playing the good defense without fouling, as well as getting the ball in periodically, let Weber touch it, and cut to the basket. Now they're settling for the long jumpers and an out fall. And Jalen Rose guilty of the foul out front. That's four on Rose. Len told you earlier, on Thursday at Illinois, Ohio State built a huge lead and then had to withstand an Illinois charge, and the Buckeyes didn't help themselves by missing free throws down the stretch. Baker hits the first. One 
51-52. Baker looks to make it a 10-point lead with a minute 20 to play. Buckeyes by nine. Now with time running out, now you got to look for some easy three shots. Weber. Hit the back rim. Gent has the rebound. And the irony is Weber finally touches the ball in this comeback, but it's uh, 20 oh, feet from the basket. That is his fourth personal. The Buckeyes will go to the free throw line again with 1.03 to play. That foul was on Juwan Howard. That was four on Howard. A victory today puts Ohio State in a tie with Indiana atop the Big Ten, and those are the two teams that Number were no champions of the Big Ten Conference Ohio last year. Coming down the wire, Ohio State still has an opportunity at Indiana, I believe, at home. Funny you should mention that, Len. When you check out February 23rd, notwithstanding the other games Ohio State has to play, but obviously that could be one for the championship. Jackson hits them both, and then Ohio State calls time with 1.03 to play. It's an 11-point lead for the Buckeyes. We'll come back to Ann Arbor in just a moment. 63 seconds to play here at the University of Michigan. Ohio State leading at 63-52. to 52. And as we mentioned, a victory for the Buckeyes puts them right up top, the Big Ten, along with Indiana. Indiana just beaten by Michigan State. They would each be 6-1. and one. Michigan would fall to 4-4. Four and four. Ironically, some big victories for the Wolverines have come on the road. They won at Iowa, at Illinois, and then last Wednesday night at Michigan State. Well, that's part of the ups and downs of having a young team. And this guy right here played a prominent role in the comeback by just getting his hands on the ball, forcing Ohio State to take notice, and then finding some open people as well as some opportunities for himself. And then, at about the 2.43 mark, when the Michigan run stopped, a lot of that had to do with the fact that Michigan forgot about Chris Weber. He became invisible. King, catching and shooting Weber, rebound and scores. 63-54. And we are at 45 seconds for the game. And the foul will be on Ray Jackson. I want to remind you, the coordinating producer of NCAA basketball on CBS is Bob Dekus. Today's game and at the half was produced by Roy Hamilton and directed by Mike Arnold. The senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorin. And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. Randy Ayers, who said yesterday that, uh, frankly, his team has been struggling lately, despite the win at Illinois. But the struggle isn't noticeable until maybe the second half with a big lead. And Ohio State tends to get tentative. They don't tend to take the shots that they normally would uh, and flow into their offense and start to think about what they're doing, maybe trying to save the lead and to uh, affirmatively increase it. Affirmatively? Counselor, for, for lack of a, <laughs> a better description, Jackson hits them both. 65-54. Jackson, 20 points, 9 boards, and an assist, and Jalen Rose floats in for the basket. And Ohio State not wishing the foul on that shot, just backed off. And Jimmy King will foul Baker and send him to the line with 25.9 to play. And our Chevrolet players of the game for this afternoon are Jimmy Jackson of Ohio State and Jimmy King, who has been able to light a spark here and there for Michigan and a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Number three, Mark Baker. Boy, here's a guy who's been just as valuable this afternoon to Ohio State in the second half, perhaps when they've needed him the most. Well, he's been pretty quiet in, in getting the job done. You know, he picks his spot. And as a savvy senior, he recognized that he can play with his team and still get the job done offensively. I mean, he had a lot of coast-to-coast -coast baskets, more than any player probably should have in this level of, of basketball play. But he's so quick, you just can't run him down. 
Jackson has the rebound. Live coverage of the AT&T fourth round coming up next. King, three-pointer, no good. Jackson, rebound and score. And a timeout. Michigan burns its last timeout with 15.4 to play in the game, and the Buckeyes leading it by a score of 66 to 58. And Ed Hightower just double-checking the timeout situation. 